Good morning, everybody, and wake up. welcome, w- wait, wake up to Wake Up Missoula, um, and I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you in through the weekend. It is the last weekend for the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, so let's talk about some of the films, and we can dive into uh, some of the weather that you guys can expect to stay inside this weekend as well. So let's take a look. It's one degree outside um, with a high of 24, a low of 18. Uh, y- most of your highs are going to be a lot lower, but your lows are going to be a little bit warmer compared to what we've seen before with the single digit. Sunday night, we're going to see that low go dip down into the single digits, but you can expect your highs to remain into the 20s and the teens um, as we go into the weekend. Well, weather is going to start warming up because, you know, winter can't last forever here in Missoula. So we'll get there. And um, here are some things that are happening in the news. An investigate. Oh, that's a horrible segue. I- I'm sorry. I just got to apologize for that. I just kind of just like jumped right into it. Okay. <coughs> ah! I'm just getting it over a cold. Okay, an investigation by the Missoulian found that a Department of Health and Human Services issued no significant sanctions despite 58 complaints made by made against Montana Academy that helped um, the Montana Academy established 15 years ago. Uh, um, has helped troubled teens, but with uh, certain complaints and certain unregulated things because um, they fell into the umbrella of religious um, practices. Um, the group... Um, have been, um, um, and so they've basically kind of self-regulated and they've kind of been complaint driven. They kind of adjusted based on some of the things. It's kind of like a learning curve, but they haven't been able to um, figure out what they're doing. So, ah, sorry, I'm just like, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's too many opinions. Let's get back to the story, but the Department of Health and Human Services has extended an olive branch to work with those at Montana Academy to get them up to the Montana's code for for-profit camp programs. Um, John Santa, he's the head of the PAARP board and co-founder of Montana Academy, said that he was pleased that the health department seemed very receptive and uh, understanding that its specific rules would need to be altered to accommodate the level of care that they offer. He said that they encouraged the health department was willing to discuss us creating standards that honor the rules that we've created them and adjusted to meet our needs. In state news, the state of Montana passed a law um, in the House, sorry, the Montana uh, in the House passed a law uh, basically um, preventing any um, small communities by uh, ha- um, initiating a gun ordinance that regulates guns uh, and gun sales in smaller towns. So, um, Republican Matt Rager says the bills are a response to Missoula County ordinances that require background checks for private gun sales and ban weapons in certain public buildings, parks, places of public assembly and polling sites. Moms Demand Action went down this past week to Helena to give public comment and apparently fell on deaf ears. Missoula passed an emergency ordinance last October before 2018 election to ban guns on sites that uh, had polling places but were very vague in the the um, words as well. Um, um, but more interesting, in 2016, when they required background checks within the city limits, Attorney General Tim Fox tried to overturn the ruling, but the city appealed and District Judge Robert Deshaw ruled that oct- in October that Missoula has the right to require background checks for private gun sales. And in 2016, it kind of stood there. Of course, flash forward to now, and Montana State House says that the ordinance has no teeth. The Senate will vote on this later. But buyer beware, um, you cannot expect the city of Missoula to let this go without a fight, and thus far would appeal to the Montana Supreme Court will they be discussing this further. Uh, but of course, uh, Attorney General Tim Fox has mar- until March 3rd, according to the article by Ms. Uh, Helena Independent Report, to dispute Missoula's ordinance. All right. National news. Republican um, Mark Harris. I'm sure you've heard about this in the news. There's been um, th- there's been claims that um, he hired somebody to tampering with the polling in the election, and it was such a close election. So now they're going to basically have a whole new election with a primary in place as well. Being such a close race in the first place, the election board called Harris the winner over Democratic Dan McCready. But after four days of hearing witnesses detailed about an operative hired by Harris illegally handled absentee ballots uh, felony in North Carolina, one witness says she filed, she uh, filled an unmasked, unmarked section of ballots. Um, Harris 
own son testified against him on Wednesday that he warned his father that the operative's tactics were likely illegal. Harris has said publicly since the investigation began in December that he was unaware of any illegal acts that may have been done on behalf of his campaign. So far, the election is up in the air, and they will hold a hearing to discuss when the election will occur, but they're going to have a primary, an election, and um, this could see Harris kicked out of his own party primary this coming uh, election season there. So it's going to be a 2019 election in North Carolina. So that's kind of what's happening in the news today. Here's a couple new programs. Uh, we have part two of the Ballet Beyond Borders, which will be airing this weekend, along with many other programs, which include uh, the 10th um, year of the concert, Fusions. <laughs> So there was a bee that was imported into New Zealand to pollinate the clover that had been imported into New Zealand. And it was a native British bee that has now gone extinct in Great Britain. And so they're looking at trying to bring the bee back from New Zealand to repopulate Great Britain with that particular bee that was once native. So there's some strange things happening as a result of that and again sometimes there's there may be good and sometimes there may not and more often probably it's mixed yeah. we had two years of really bad counts uh, we just had the fire and bison all gone into the trees and they were really hard to find even out of health company you think something big and dark brown like that'd be easy to find but we just couldn't find it we had two years of really bad counts we counted like 215 one year and the next year it was like 162. They thought, man, we must have some disease going on. We weren't finding dead animals. So we thought, what's going on here? So after we had this meeting in the parking lot, like two days later, we went and we did our, our summer helicopter camp. Wayne and I did it, well, and a couple others that got of the biologists there, and we counted 600. The director said he was going to help me, right? We're going to see this on my film. <laughs> but... Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about a movie that's coming out this particular week. It's time for your um, pre-critic. Actually, it's more my pre-critic, and I've forced it upon you. Anyways, let's get going without further delay. Uh, this is the one and only new movie that's basically coming out this week. Uh, it's about uh, Toothless falling in love. Just so you guys know, Toothless is a dragon, and that's the name of the dragon. And he he's in love with the enemy. But it turns out the lady dragon isn't the kind of dragon lady you'd expect. So expect a whole lot of expectations, uh, kind of like an awkward love story from the first film where you say blah, 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 and how you can convey emotions so well. A lot of times what they do with animation is like they make their eyes like five times bigger so they can convey like, oh, I'm sad. Okay, cool. Usually the animation gives them bigger eyes so you can see. Uh, this is a movie that it's coming out this week because... Uh, the old Fighting With My Family is a perfect movie for people who are WWE fans, but uh, How to Train Your Dragon is more just like, kind of like, if you're a dog lover, this is kind of like the uh, movie for you. It's like, imagine your dog is a dragon that flies. That's kind of what this movie is. And a lot of people really like these movies. It's cute. 
it's adorable and it's emotionally impactful um, that only DreamWorks can do. Um, besides Pixar, of course, and um, many other animation studios. So pretty much, you know, a lot of movies can do that. All right, so that's pretty much it for all your pre-critic needs. Um, there's not too many movies coming out. There's a couple international movies coming out this week, but um, I definitely never heard of them, and not to mention that they're not coming out this weekend. But I do want to have this time to talk about the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival before I jump into Flagship Friday. So if you're interested in learning about Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, you can go to BigSkyFilmFest.com. Org. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that uh, brings um, filmmakers from all around. Um, they always try to raise money. You can always donate to them to have the experience. Over 150 documentaries are being shown this week. They're short, long, even docs that climb on rocks. I said it last week. I'm still. I said it last Wednesday. I'm still going to say it. Doc shops. I just want to say doc shops are really important because it engages with you. It's in, uh, um, one of the things um, that. Um, that they're going to be doing this week is, let me just scroll on ahead um, to Friday, uh, starting this morning at 10 a.m., they have a How to Craft Effective Distribution Strategy from Do-It-Yourself to Dream Deal. So this is kind of like self-publishing um, in a way for your documentary and just figuring out a way how to distribute your product to people. Um, you know, besides just posting on YouTube and hoping you get X amount of views. Um, this is for you to actually get some capital for working on this project and your time. Documentaries take time to do because you're at the mercy of the subjects that you film. Um, 12.30, public broadcasting, the evolving landscape of public media. And all these are happening at, at the MCT, pretty much happening 10, 12, Two o'clock is the distribution forecast is the golden age of doc a bubble. And they'll be talking about documentary distribution options uh, have explained in just the past few years, improving, but also complicating the choices for documentary filmmakers. So a lot of times if you make a really cool documentary, see if you can get somebody who can distribute for you. But if you can't, you can always do your own self distribution distribution. Netflix has been picking up a lot of documentaries, so that's always one thing that you can look into as well. They did a teen intensive doc shop, which MCAT um, donated um, cameras uh, for them to use. Um, and if you're interested in being a part of MCAT as well, we always do our orientation every Wednesday at 5.30. We have the equipment and um, we'll help you along the way, whether you want to make a documentary or a fun film. And speaking of fun films, Flagship has started uh, their spring session or winter session because winter and spring are kind of like one big session. So we're going to jump right in and we're going to show you the Flagship Friday video of the week. It's one of the last videos from uh, C.S. Porter from last fall. And hopefully by next week we'll be seeing some new uh, um, films from this 2019 season. So without further ado, here is the Electric Children. Hey, Mr. Limpy. Your leg is stupid. Care for me. Don't talk to her that way. <laughs> How electricity? How much did you see? I just saw him looking like he had been shocked and you throwing a lightning ball. You didn't see anything. Michael, come back. I don't think we'll talk about this. I feel like we're being hunted, Michael. Confuse you. It says here to find treasure, find electric children. I think I was electrocuted today. Well, 
What are electric children anyway? I don't know. So let's go find them. Yeah. It says we have to go that way. Yeah, so let's go that way. They'll never find the electric children. Oh, it says we go this way, but I'm confused. What part are you confused on? Confused down here, because it should be bigger, but it's just telling us to go this way, but it doesn't tell us where to go, but then it just instantly appears here. Are you okay? I was electrocuted again. It must be in the pipes. I wonder where the pipes are coming from. I think they're coming from there. There? But we were just there. Let's go that way. Yeah. Are you using the electricity again? I'm trying to find them. Not more water. I can tell we're close. And warn them. You can't find them like doing that. Maybe I just find them just by bring Out of my way. Class. Taylor, Michael, are you here? Is that you? We're right here. Are you the electric children? Yes. yes. Let me guess. You're Taylor and you're Michael. Yep. Why, why do you know this? Um, the map? Of course, I knew they were trying to let you guys find us. Here, everyone come and Did you know all thinking is electric? Uh, Trying to give her electricity. Oh. Are you okay? What happened? I don't know. Now she has enough power. I'm gonna give you her. Okay? Some... Oh. Oh. It's falling. Is someone really following us? I hope not. Let's get out. Look. All right. I think I have something in my locker that'll help. children. What are there what if there are more of us? The Electric Children Club? No, we should call it the Electro Clam. Electro Clam! I didn't make the official title of the movie Electro Clan for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to some city council stuff. Uh, the city uh, met with the Committee of the Whole, and they uh, have um, some f more information about the uh, ward mapping and how they're going to readjust the uh, the new city uh, ward lines as uh, the city of Missoula continues to grow with additional uh, neighborhoods uh, being added in in just Ward 2. So Mike Haynes, Development Director of uh, the City of Missoula, talks a little more about this. Update every two years. Um, every 10 years, ward boundaries are, are adjusted as needed based on new uh, census population data. And in the interim years, ward boundaries are adjusted based on uh, building permits that we issue and then uh, calculating uh, new population from that. All right. So, um, like like you said before, um, a lot of times uh, when you're doing a rewarding of a certain map, there's certain areas within wards that have like certain zoning districts, industrial districts, and all that stuff as well within there. So they're just trying to figure out a way to kind of keep 
certain areas in certain areas while at the same time expanding into some new areas, which, you know, most of the things that are expanding are we're all expanding west here in Missoula. I know there's East Missoula and East Missoula um, at this point doesn't seem like it's going to be annexed anytime soon. Airport, Vol Airport Vol Boulevard, excuse me, um, was annexed just recently, and now they're basically adjusting it to accommodate all that stuff. And of course, um, I said I was going to make a public comment on this, and I was I was going to wait to the public hearing on the uh, on the 11th to basically just say, hey, um, um, my suggestion was basically going to be like um, you, the city council member. Um, it, uh, you shouldn't um, adjust the wards for e any individual person, and it should be, uh, you know, if they are out of the ward when the ward shifts, they should be like a grandfathered in system so they can keep their position in that particular ward. I don't know. It might not fly right. Who knows? But um, here's, uh, here's Mike Haynes talking about the expected growth in some of the wards. Um, it's a little like here's of course when you see the picture you can barely see it but if you get a chance uh, just listen closely. We estimate 312 new residents over the past eight years. Compare that with Ward 2 at 4,419. That does include uh, an estimated 774 from the annexation but you can see there's some pretty wide fluctuations in uh, the number of new residential units that have come online and, and the estimated new population uh, between wards. All right. Oh, hold on one second. I just got to move this back just a little bit. Okay. So as you can see here in this particular area, this is the green area. So this is where the population is over the alignment. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep it uh, between uh, 12,300 people and um, 13. 13,100 is the maximum. So what they're going to do is they're going to deviate some of the um, um, ward from Ward 2 to Ward 4, which will affect Ward 5, which would affect Ward 6. And so they're trying to figure out a way, a solution to uh, adjust for population growth because Airport Boulevard is clearly in Ward 2. So a lot of Ward 2 is going to have to readjust. And um, so that's kind of what's happening with that. Of course, one of the questions I was asked is, to add new wards within the city limits, which uh, the response was it would have to be up to the city of Missoula voters to initiate a new ward, hence would be a two new members on the city council for the new ward that would be added. So here's Topher. Um, he uh, gave a public comment on this matter um, about what he thinks about it, and he, he, uh, he represents Ward 6. Evaluate the burden placed on Ward 6. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of play being done with Ward 6 and maybe trying to spread out the stability of our wards. Um, I think, I guess just that it's easy to try to maybe, we're thinking about this as Ward 6 can be, I mean, it's obviously out of alignment right now and we're trying to bring it into alignment, but that when we start to play with boundaries, you start to affect how neighbors and people um, how they associate with their neighborhood, how they associate with their with their ward representative, and Ward Six seems like a uh, a ward that could benefit from some stability. And I wonder if there's other areas that we could play with, um, even though that they are in alignment, but that we could just kind of not always be playing with Ward Six. All right. So that was a public comment made by a resident of Ward Six. Um, Brian von Losberg responds um, to. What he thinks about the war changes? Um, we're not isolating Ward Six to play with it. Uh, I mentioned this uh, last week, I think, when this brought up came up. When I first ran for office, you know, Ward One didn't include part of the North Side, so the Ward Two, Ward One um, neighborhood changed. They're, they're still dealing with uh, that sort of um, confusion, you know, around folks not understanding it. There was a time not that long ago when the mayor was on council and Ward 1 included all of the university. So um, I've looked at the map a great deal and tried to see other ways, um, uh, just out of curiosity, that the wards could change. And I'm not seeing it either, which is really just a confirmation, I think, of the work that the development services staff has done. I think clearly, as Ms. Merritt um, mentioned, that the, the first option is a preferred one that, that Second option and what it does to Ward 2 um, is just a super odd uh, situation and creates 
um, some real uh, close proximity confusion to, to folks in that one area. So I'm supportive of the motion as well. All right. So um, they've uh, went into more detail about uh, the ward boundaries. They'll be uh, discussing this a little bit more during the public hearing. Will they have one example over another? They always want to have to be, uh, they always want to um, include certain things to make it uh, adjust perfectly uh, for the, the wards. And I believe that um, I think it was Ward 4, what they had to extend a little bit further up the um, the Mullen Road reserve kind of area, while at the same time, you know, Ward 2 is taking up basically Airport Boulevard, so they'll have to readjust. Ward 2 is definitely one of those wards that they uh, definitely have to look into because it's definitely the fastest growing ward in the city of Missoula. All right, so uh, that's basically uh, what they talked about for ward mapping. It's all the discussion, all the detail stuff is in the committee reports. They'll have their uh, presentation for the public hearing, I believe, on uh, March 11th. Um, whatever the Monday kind of falls along, let me just quickly check my calendar. Um, Real quick. Yep, March 11th is when they ho hope to host the public hearing on uh, ward mapping and uh, doing the reworking of the system. So you guys can give your public comment on that meeting. It starts at 7 p.m. Moving on. Uh, the next plan of... Uh, um, the next part of the meeting is to figure out the water utility debt, payment, debt payments. So here is Mayor John Engen to talk a little bit about the water utility. Uh, we have committed to a financial model that holds rates at 2011 rates um, for a good long period of time. Um, and in doing so, we will be able to invest roughly $6 million a year in capital expenses, make debt service, and continue to pay employees all while delivering safe, clean water to the folks we serve. Um, I consider this a success story by any measure. Uh, and I think the, the pitch we made to Standard & Poor's would reflect that as well. Um, if I were uh, playing poker and reading body language, um, I, I would suggest that we had a pretty good hand, and I think the folks at S&P recognize that. All right, so that was Mayor John Ingen. Um, as soon as the city of Missoula acquired the water company, they, they found that they were able to uh, have more than enough uh, through the current rate system, as he said, to make the payment. So the $6 million in revenue from the ratepayers would help pay for the $5 million that they owe in debt and the million dollars which would be going to investing in um, basically replacing, uh, improving the infrastructure of the water system. Much of the money that have gone to the water system went to the Carlisle Group in the past. They had three companies, and what they usually did is they took the revenue from all the companies, bunched them all together, and uh, they it was like one lump sum, so they there was no uh, clear amount of revenue that was being done. So the city of Missoula, through the process, had to kind of audit the uh, water company. So Basically, based on the current rates, it kind of seemed like they got uh, a million. Uh, it kind of seemed like, well, I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but they got, uh, um, the, the, there were some numbers there during the hearings, uh, the Water Commission, I was there, about like $8 million that they were taking from the city of Missoula in revenue and not putting back in. But uh, don't quote me on that. All right. So Lee Griffin uh, goes into detail about the numbers in terms of uh, like how far we need to go for making payments off the interest and all that stuff. These are our best estimates at this time until we actually sell the bonds. So we will sell the bonds and also use some of the proceeds from the prior debt, which are currently held in escrow, to redeem the bonds and pay cost of issuance on the new bonds. And that was Lee Griffin. Um, my notes, uh, public utilities, uh, uh, ever since it became a public utility, uh, they, there hasn't been a need to pay taxes on the properties of Missoula Water uh, compared to Mountain Water Company, which was a private entity which did pay taxes. So Missoula did get money from that, but through the revenue that they're getting through the water, uh, the city municipality owned, they're able to get that money, the principal amount, to not exceed $5 million to pay the debt of the, uh, to pay the portion of the uh, city's outstanding water system revenue bond, um, in, in uh, aggregate principal amount to not exceed $130 uh, million to redeem with other available funds, the city's outstanding water system revenue bond. So a lot of these bonds, it, the way that bonds work is that you need to pay on time the exact amount you're never supposed to like pay off your debt all at once. So it seems like with $5 million, if it's going to be uh, 
$5 million a year. Let's take, do the math on my handy dandy iPhone. Um, if we do it, so 100, let's see, 130 divided by five. We're looking at a 26 year um, bond, which basically is paying for itself and without any taxpayers having to pay. So, and that's all based on the 2011 rate payments. Gwen Jones is happy about the amount of revenue that is coming in for this. It was a, a huge, it was a huge effort over the last 15 years for all of this to happen, and now we're, we're starting to really see the benefits. And the financial news is really exciting. I'm very excited about hearing what the ultimate credit rating is because that's going to have a huge impact also in terms of money that can be reinvested in our water system in our community and I know that far more money's being reinvested now frankly than was in the past and I think another layer to that is that money is going to not only employ our water company employees, but also the contractors that they have to hire when they have to do all of that infrastructure, maintenance, capital investment, huge benefits to our community in terms of paying good wages to people who are earning it. So there's just so many good layers of good here. All right. So that was Gwen Jones. And it, you know, to kind of leave off on a uh, high note for the, uh, my uh, city council report, um, all the rate pay uh, basically goes to investing within the city owned. So basically, as a taxpayer, it's your city, it's your water company, and you're basically, your rate pay invests into your own water system. So um, rather than uh, lining the pockets of Carlisle Group, uh, you're now investing in the city of Missoula while still paying 2011 rates. So um, who, who knows if the rates are going to go up? I don't know. It, it really depends upon if there's any plans, but you'll all hear about it in public works at the uh, city council uh, committee meetings on Wednesdays. Uh, they usually always have to go to the city council, the committee meetings to talk about budgeting and how much is going to get paid for one, like a, a replacement valve and that kind of deal. And it's more details. So if you're interested in finding out more information about your city committee meetings and more, um, you can go to CI. Dot Missoula, dot MT, dot US. Um, once again, I want to remind you guys to find out more information about your city council and the city of Missoula in general as uh, MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resource for everything Missoula. We go out in the community and we uh, shoot people. Um, and by what I mean by shoot people is that we document um, Missoula for Missoula, and we're kind of like a, a history hub here in Missoula that we've been doing it since the 90s. So if you're ever interested in having MCAT um, film your uh, event rally and or cause, you can contact us, MCAT.org. Email us, MCAT at MCAT.org. You can also um, call us, 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. All right, so that's pretty much it for your um, city council report. I have an art clip for you guys. I want to show you this one last one from the Clay Studio of Missoula, um, since this is the uh, last day to check out this art installation. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about events. There's a lot of um, educational things happening for your Saturday, so we'll get on that after this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey guys, just want to quickly remind you that um, most of our art clips are made and produced in-house here through MCAT through our very own Rick Phillips. So without further ado, let's talk about some events that are going on. I'll try to be as quickly as po I'll, I'll try to be as quick as possible. Um, parent yoga, that's uh, one thing that's happening uh, this morning starting at 10 a.m. It's Peaceful Heart and Yoga. It's yoga for you and your kids if you're interested in doing so. Tiny Tales and Storytime at Musical Public Library as always starting at 10.30 a.m. Super Sprouts, Sports Skills, Parker and Recreation are doing a sports and wellness deal. Um, budding sports stars will develop their coordination while having fun and learning about a variety of sports, balance, and movement skills. Starting at 11 a.m., it's going to be at the MPR Sports and Wellness Center at 1515 Fairview Avenue. It's $50. Um, of course, you know, if you have a city card, it's $40. And you know how easy it is to get a city card? Um, you have to be a city resident, and all you got to do is bring a piece of mail with uh, your address on there and be like, here's your city card. Bada bing. There you go. Hands-on science, chemical reactions. They're talking about chemicals and how they react to everyday life at the Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. Duck birthday party. The food zoo. This is extremely adorable. I, 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 I'm like... I'm, it's amazing. Um, one one of the things that uh, University of Montana they work with a lot of things. You know, like um, they have the Osprey camera. This time they're having a duck camera. Um, it's the a birthday lunch for the at the food zoo at the University of Montana as they celebrate the feathered friends big day. It's their first birthday, and you're going to be able to see them live streaming on the monitors at the plasma screens inside the game center at the UC. They have a lot of theme stuff as well. Um, and yeah, you can uh, also watch the stream on the UM Dining page, and it all starts at 11 a.m. today. Yarns and watercolor at the Musical Public Library. You want to do some art, or do you want to make your own sweaters? You have your options at the Musical Public Library every single Friday. Cribbage and Bridge at Musical Senior Center. Have some lunch, hang out with some old friends, all starting around lunchtime 12. Big Sky Film Fest. I just want to mention once again is that if you're interested in finding out the schedule for anything, you can always go to the Big Sky Film um, get BigSkyFilmFest.org um, and you see this website. You see a video and it kind of gives you a representation of some of the documentaries. There's a lot of documentaries playing. I don't want to, like, if I literally started talking about the events for all the documentaries that are playing, um, it basically just nothing but be an hour show about me talking about what documentaries and their description. So I'm going to kind of bypass that altogether. Endeavor um, is a uh, kind of like a co op education center co-op uh, homeschool kids type deal it is uh they're doing an, an experimental learning space um this is going to be at their 1905 sussex avenue um location um it's every friday from 2 30 to 4 and they're doing a, a lego club and um they do require parents to enter their email address for event notifications and to sign up waiver form uh, all children must be accompanied by an adult this is not a drop-off event um, predator feeding is own sectarium. They're uh, feeding cricket to one of the hungry predators. Family Friendly Friday starting at 6 p.m. Every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. The Top Hat presents Family Friendly Friday, a time where parents and their kids can socialize, listen to music, eat great food, and have fun. Missoula History Club speaker, what does it mean to be bold? Missoula Public Library, what does it mean to be bold? Beth Judy, author of Bold Women in Montana History, reflects on that question through the 15 lives of Montana women profiled in her book, her subjects range from uh, Petamakin and or Running Eagle, the Blackfeet Warrior, to Hollywood star uh, Marin Eloy, uh, the Greeno Sisters of Rodeo fame, the Alma Smith Jacobs, Montana State Librarian in the 1970s who quali uh, quietly fought for civil rights in her hometown of Great Falls on the side. All right, so that's kind of what's happening for your Friday. Um, if you look online at MissoulaEvents.net, you can see all these documentaries that are playing here as well. They got uh, one that's playing at the Wilma. A lot of times they save a lot of the uh, main ones that they want to emphasize at the Wilma, and it's the one that's called Waiting for the Punchline. So if we take a look um, in Rooster Teeth's Waiting for the Punchline, documentary filmmaker Matt Hames captures a gritty stand-up comedy club scene in San Francisco through the rise of Nick Scarpia, Scarpino, sorry about that, a highly successful podcast by day who by night endures the harsh rejection of dive bars as he attempts to earn credibility as a stand-up 
comedian. So that's kind of the documentaries that I planned that night. If you're interested in going out and having a good time, listening to music and stuff like that, Union Club has Money Penny live at the Union Club. JD at, and Western Front at the Sunrise Saloon, some country music. You got some hip hop electronic music at the top hat. It's the party go party goers um, album release party, and that's what kind of what's happening for your Friday. I want to show you guys another art clip, and this is from the um, Missoula Art Museum. Actually, I want to throw it over to um, a different art clip and this is uh what's just dropped at the zach and you have until march 9th to check it out Hey guys, welcome back. And um, if you guys didn't take a quick, quick look, quick look at some of the uh, clips right in that last video from our very own Rick Phillips here, produ produces those art clips for us to enjoy and for me to show you guys while I take a quick little breather from talking so much. Uh, <laughs> um, Theo Ellsworth um, art is featured there as well. Uh, looks like there's a couple other, there's a bunch of other artists there as well, but. I definitely know Theo Ellsworth when I see one, so you guys can enjoy that at the Zach. Pretty much uh, all during the public hours, I believe it's open from like 9, 10 a.m. to about 5, and they always have a bunch of classes there and a bunch of things. They're also hosting the very popular Girls Rock Camp, and which will be uh, playing at the family's first um, top hat on March 16th or 15th, whatever happens on that family-friendly Friday and that week, so just look for it. You can't miss it. All right, so let's finish up your events. Um, this, there's a lot of things happening on Saturday, and these are all educational um, events for a lot of young kids or people who are who want to bird watch. So starting tomorrow at 7 a.m., uh, University of Montana all day field trip at, to the Missoula Valley to look at raptors. Um, Birds of Prey, and the meet in the northwest corner of the University of Montana Amp Center parking lot, lot P, at 7.50 a.m., or the Senex gas station in Ronan at 9 a.m. It's free. You can contact Larry Weeks. His number is 549-5632. You can go to uh, BWS uh, Guinea at gmail.com. Actually, let me actually just uh, blow this up for you guys so you can get a nice look of it. So here is his um, email. If you want to um, just be like, hey, I want to go look at some birds, some raptors. This will be fun to do. If you have a free Saturday and you just kind of want to do it, if you're a bird enthusiast, I think it'll be great for you guys to check this out as well. All right, let's continue on. Uh, Basic Silversmithing Lifelong Learning Center is doing a lot of stuff, and this is just one of them I'm just going to mention. Um, actually, I'm going to mention the CPR deal, dude, because it's important. But silversmithing is a one-day class where you learn how to cut and pierce with a jeweler's saw, use a hammer to texture metals with stamps, wire, and lace, and create cold connections using rivets and eyelets. So basically, uh, you make metal jewelry, and uh, you kind of fit it all together. Um, CPR and first aid. Dickens and Lifelong Learning Center, again, is doing a combination class, includes the Heart Saver First Aid Adult Child Infant CPR. The focus is a course of a hands-on instruction with basic management of illness and injuries in the first few minutes until professional help arrives. So that, they're just going to teach you a little, some of this stuff as well. Um, and you can find out more information by going to the Lifelong Learning Center on their website. You just look up the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center and you can't miss it. 
winter markets. It's the last uh, chance to go check out the Orchard Homes winter market. It's the barn off of Reserve Street. Um, for the month of February, they've been doing a uh, winter market all month long um, from about 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. And that's it's their last weekend to check it out. Um, but of course, if you like the winter market, um, in general, if you're old school like myself, you can go to the Missoula Senior Center every single Saturday up until the farmer's market in the downtown Missoula area starts. Um, they open up the Missoula Senior Center from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. to do some farmer's market stuff. Oodles of Doodles, abstract design with Ms. Uh, Vizzuti, um, Living Art of Montana. Um, if you can scribble, you can do it. Um, they'll work with doodles and patterns, and then give our designs a lift off the page, um, open to adults dealing with illness and loss, including their caregivers. Um, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation is doing a kids event from 11 to 1 p.m. They're learning about birds. Come to the Elk Country Visitor Center and learn about the raptors. And with Wild Skies, uh, Skies, sorry, Wild Skies, uh, live live raptor presentations, play games, and explore the visitor center. And this is open from 11 to 1 p.m. Kid for all for kids. And here's another thing. I was learning 11. It's another thing. It's Trekker Kids at Travelers Rest State Park. They're talking about Salish stories. Um, it's their uh, they're back from their winter hiatus, uh, and it's an exciting education activities every other Saturday from 11 to noon. So you get to learn about some of the Salish stories and some of the uh, language from the Salish um, tribe, and it, it's always fun. They ha always have a, a bunch of people and a bunch of guests come up there as well, and uh, they always try to make events free for kids, but whenever they need donations, it's usually 5 to $10. Winter Carnival, Family Fun Day, it's going to be at the church at Church at the Gates. What gates? I don't know. Church at the Gates. Join us at the afternoon of fun carnival games, face painting, balloon animals, bounce houses, free uh, free hot dogs, popcorn, and cotton candy. It's $5 per family. Get your tickets on the website at the church, churchatthegates.org. And yeah. So here is a... A fun, another educational event for all sorts of people. And this is uh, No Enemy Movement Observed. The exhibit tells the story of a 20-year-old man removed from his middle class setting, trained to be a basically qualified Marine, and placed in combat half a world away. Leon Howard served as a Marine Corps scout during Vietnam War. The exhibit features 45 Leon's fo photographs, enlarged from original size and a range of artifacts he brought back from the war. The exhibit will run from February 2019 to July 2020. Um, I actually have a photo that I can probably show you. Um, and oh yeah, here they are. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of photos. So let me kind of go through it for you guys. Of course, you know, um, um, during um, Missoula, uh, during Missoula Live, we had Ted Hughes from the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula talk about this. And so here's a couple photos from um, the Vietnam War. And this is, these are the photos that are going to be featured there as well. You can kind of see just like him being in the area. Of course, you can see some of the damage in some of the photos as well. Um, looking at some of the uh, kind of the grenades, the, uh, the bombs, and a couple things there. Yeah. All right. And, you know, th those are just some of the representations. And this weekend, you'll be able to kind of see it while at the same time, maybe even meet the the man himself. All right. MCAT Saturday drop-ins are back. We took a hiatus last Saturday to uh, help the teen intensive doc um, experience for people from all over to come to Montana, to uh, come to Missoula, particularly to do their documentaries. So, um, MCAT Saturday drop-ins are back, and they're uh, being hosted from 1 to 5 p.m. It's a drop-in. It's $10 per kid, um, and it's uh, $5 for a half day if you just want your kid to be there for part of the day. And, you know, it, it really depends on each kid. It's more or less like when a kid comes in here, and they're just like, so what do we guys do here? It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an excuse to get creative, and we use stop animation Legos and stuff like that, along with the ability to do some live-action filmmaking. It's just a, a ground-up creative experience for a bunch of kids who come down here to just create. Um, Big Sky High School Band Blue Note Cafe. Um, so Big Sky High School, um, their band, their jazz band comes together and they do a Blue Note Cafe to help raise money. And it starts at 6.30, doors open, and they play from 7 to 9 p.m. in the cafetorium at Big Sky High School. Desserts will be served. Tickets may be bought at the door and they cost $10 each and all proceeds um, go towards um, trips and other things that'll help their 
um, art program. Um, tickets, um, okay, so anyways, men's basketball versus Montana State is happening uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. It's going to be um, a big game, you know, Bobcat Grizz basketball game. You can't miss it. Um, da -da -da. Oh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's it's cold, but that's what you get in a Montana winter. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. <laughs>